Hi, I'm Justin Wasasu with uh, County Grand Prairie po Problem Wildlife Officer. Um, I'll be doing the wildlife uh, virothon uh, component. Um, so you can see we have uh, all sorts of wildlife that are abundant in our area and uh, I'm open to break down and show what different uh, skulls look like. So in Alberta we have uh, quite a few different types of animals, wildlife. Um, as a, a fur bearer we uh, break them down into categories of a canine, a feline, a, a rodent and then a weasel family. I will start with a canine. So this is a wolf skull. You can see the different sizes of teeth on them. Canine teeth. So these are uh, designed for uh, cutting, chewing bones, and uh, and bringing down their prey. So their uh, jaws are very strong in here. They're designed to. Uh, lots of force to bite down so uh, an adult sized male female wolf has the chewing capacity to uh, bite down force of well over uh, 1500 pounds per square inch um, so you can see the different sizes of them so this is what I would call a female and an older male um, as they age you can see they have a a bone that attaches the muscles into their spine so the older they get the more distinct this uh, bone sticks out of their, their skull. Um, you can see their nasal cavity everything like that so they have longer noses too on them so when they uh, absorb smells because that's what they uh, are famous for is their their noses so it's longer than a, a feline or a weasel family because it uh, registers into their brain more so they can get more out of the sense as they're hunting and looking for themselves their other pack mates and uh, and uh, their prey that they're hunting for um, the feline you can see this is a lynx skull you can see the teeth are very sharp, pointed. Their jaw isn't as long as a canine, so they don't have the biting force as a canine does, but they still uh, have very, very sharp teeth. And uh, they mostly, their prey mostly has to be fresh after they've harvested it to, uh, to eat it. Um, a bobcat is in the south and it's a little bit smaller. This is another lynx skull, so a bobcat skull would actually be about half this size. Into the weasel family, so there's quite a few different uh, weasels. Um, in the fur side of things, I'll show through what uh, weasels there are in Alberta. So this is the it's probably the biggest weasel of them all. Um, it's a wolverine, and you can see same thing, sharp teeth. Um, very, very thick bottom jaw bones for crushing bones while they're eating and uh, frozen. They're, they're good at eating frozen uh, uh, meat that's been harvested from, say, a pack of wolves. They've come across it. So, very thick, same short nose. They don't really uh, have a big nose like a canine for scent, but they, uh, they definitely have uh, a very good nose too. You get down into your your aquatic species of the weasel family so like your otter and your mink which are smaller a little more streamlined for swimming you can see the the length of the skull compared to uh, uh, one that doesn't go into the water um, same thing very very strong uh, canines for biting and uh, short nosed same thing eyes are up in front for swimming to view into the water um, you get down into your smallers, so this is a small fisher, um, a juvenile, you can see here on the back of the skull, it doesn't have uh, the dorsal bone on its skull, so that's uh, an identification too of a, of a juvenile. So same thing, small, small rigid teeth to uh, chew and, uh, and take down its prey. Next will be the rodent family, so your beaver muskrat. Um, you can see their jaw bones are extremely solid too for chewing down trees. 
and uh, making their survival. Um, they have bottom teeth designed to chew the bark, grass, whatever uh, they have consumed to, to eat. And a beaver's teeth continuously grow throughout his life. So as it's chewing the trees down, their teeth actually grow back into their jaw bones and uh, continuously grow out. So if they uh, were injured and they're not able to uh, ch chew their tooth off, it will actually continuously grow crooked out or the animal will not survive. That's uh, a general idea of the skulls of the fur-bearing animals in Alberta. Definitely different sizes, different uh, shapes and forms of them, and for different purposes. Thank you for watching Alberta Envirothon's video. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of our future videos. And remember to get out and explore the wonders of your environment.